And no joke, this is how the the lessons I was taught was learning like no and I like no go home and I cry. I'm like, I think they're trying to get me to kill myself. <laughs> it's just like just the super yeah. super you listen to this super nice voice for like hours just saying really sad things to you. Yeah. Hey you! Welcome back to Gaming to Know You. And we're back with the racist Italian edition. It's okay because <laughs> Sam's Italian. So but I can bump. say, I can say, it's okay. Uh, I have a friend who's Italian. And Sam can say, it's okay, I'm Italian. And then you can say all the racist things you want. It's true. Except it's not. <laughs> what? What? Darn it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't land any of those auditions I've been doing. <laughs> You just did all the auditions as a racist Italian voice? Well, you know, it's just like, I'd be like, oh, hey, you know, that sounds like an Italian name. Hey, where's my pizza? Hey, <laughs> I bet you're in the mob, eh? And then they're like, uh, will you please just read the script? I'm like, oh, yeah, you want to read a script? I'm going to read you some script now. <laughs> and then they're just even... like, I, I thought you were a voice actor. And this is the worst Italian accent I've ever heard, and you're being racist. <laughs> You're just like reading for a character that's just named like Smith or something. And yeah. Like, His name doesn't even sound Italian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus. It's like I have one. <laughs> yeah. And it's like you have ones where they'll, spe you know, specifically say like no accent or, you know, like general American and stuff like that. And just show mm -hmm. up and be like, hey, I'm Italian, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or just, just be like, it's a me, Jeffrey. <laughs> In your experience, your adventures, local voice acting, have you have you ever had to do a weird voice or like super weird things? Um, well, as a voice actor, I um, <laughs> immediately start changing my voice because now I feel like people are judging my voice. <laughs> no, um, I've I've definitely had things. I mean, I have what accents I feel confident about. Like I can do RP English, uh -huh. and uh, what is what does that stand for? Oh, uh, received pronunciation. Oh. It's just a very, um, the short answer is it's what they speak in the southern area. It's kind of what they consider like correct English. Oh. It's how like royalty news? speaks oh. and everything. And it's it's a good baseline because that's, that's the way that the rich people talk, you know? So that's a good way yeah. to, to get started before you get into Cockney and all these other kinds. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's just like... Um, I've got that RP English on there and then different American accents that I can do. Can you but... give an ex can you do a little bit of of that that RP? <laughs> <laughs> well, the manner in which I was taught to speak this, um I'm a bit out of practice, you see, but um uh -huh. you learn things where <laughs> you you focus greatly in voice acting on the vowels. Yeah. And so, um you start off with things like like a diphthong with the O. You say, no, go home. An nice. I is an I-E, an I, I cry. <laughs> and no joke, this is how the, the lessons I was taught was learning like no and I, like no go home and I cry. I'm like, I think they're trying to get me to kill myself. <laughs> It's just like just the super yeah. super you listen to this super nice voice for like hours just saying really sad things to you. Yeah, yeah, cuz it's like you you learn to count and it's just like 1 2 3 4 and you're like, "Oh, okay, you know, I'm counting with them and you know, they always, you know, it's like like you you first start learning from a CD a lot of times and yeah. um and then you start getting feedback from actual voice coach and um and so it's it's just like you know, the guy on CD is just like, great job. Now, think of the way that an American would blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, he said, great job. I must have done well. And, <laughs> yeah. Do and, you have, was, did you have like an actual British voice coach that you like talked to? Um, I had an American that um, that is trained and teaches classes and received pronunciation. He's spent a lot wow. of time in, in London and in the South and things like that. He was my, my acting coach. Nice. And... Um, and so I've, I did those and it was just like, all of a sudden we went from counting to like, no, go home alone. <laughs> I cry. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to be British anymore. <laughs> and then like, just out of nowhere, it's just like, 
can you tell me where the tube station is? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, just something really just generic. Sadness. And then, and then it's like, it's like, the noose is loose. <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, man. But, um, but yeah, so I have clearly stated the different kinds of accents I can do. And uh-huh. this person um, approached me online about doing an audiobook, And it... And I was like, yeah, sure thing. And, they're, and they didn't say anything about any extra accents on it. Yeah. And so I get in there and about halfway through, they bring in this Australian woman. Uh-huh. And I, I don't really know how to do Australian. Did that just say saw? Like it was like a big painting and it just had the word saw on it. I don't. I don't know. I w- I really just like saw the guy trying to pull the painting off, <laughs> and like couldn't stop thinking about how it really looked like he was just humping that wall. <laughs> so then anything after that, I was like, just still in my head, like, dude, yeah, dude was fucking a wall. Like, is is it, there such thing as like a wallophile? <laughs> just slightly like, for a good couple seconds, my brain was just like, dude, dude was. Dude was fucking a wall. Yeah. Like man, <laughs> man, security's on its way, man. Like, quit humping that wall. Stop. Like, stop. Spider Man's here, like you know. <laughs> Put it back in your pants, man. It's gonna look weird. Yeah. <laughs> stop it. I always just... tell you this every time we rob a museum. Spider Man comes in, and he's like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Puts his hands on his hips. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so. Yes. Um, so I really don't know, have a good Australian accent at yeah. all. I mean, I seriously pulled up clips from Lost. Where um, <laughs> have you ever watched Lost? A little bit, not really yeah. though. Well, one of the one of the main characters on there, her name is Claire, and she's always just like Charlie, like come on Charlie. And so I seriously was just like, "Hello, detective, I'm from Australia," and, and stuff like that. Like I don't I don't understand why they never told me about that. Yeah. But I just, they'd already hired me to do it. And I was just like, sure, you know, I'll just go with it. And then about three quarters of the way through, they bring in one of the bad guys who's Russian. Was your Australian girl well received? I mean, he never, he never critiqued anything about my accent. Okay. I seriously sent it to him and he was like, hey, can you like do this and this with the levels? Like sometimes it seems to have this or that. And it was something I just completely missed in editing. Yeah. And so I... I never got one bit of feedback about the accent, so it was like interesting. Uh, okay, so yeah. then the Russian dude. Yeah, and so I mean, I don't, I've never, <laughs> I don't know that I've ever met someone from Russia. Yeah. So I seriously was just like, detective, you will never <laughs> catch me. I don't know. I probably end up sounding like Dracula or something. <laughs> yeah. It was like ridiculous. really cartoonish type. Yeah. That's hard to do, like just without definitely just on the spot. Yeah. And then um, at the point where I started to realize that maybe the guy writing this audiobook wasn't a very good author, <laughs> well, I'd already gotten it because he, there were tons of typos. He did not get someone to edit this. Yeah. And I realized that he must have hired me just with his own money because this book was only available on Kindle, like self publishing. Mm. So, um, yeah, there are typos and everything on there. And I mean, as an actor, you read what's given to you, like, you do not edit. Right. <laughs> or or a proofread or anything. Yeah. And so I just read them that way. And uh, yeah, it was super awkward. And then the main character's wife, she tells you towards the end of this story that she was born and raised in Alabama and was like, that's why I have such a thick accent. <laughs> and you weren't reading it with the accent at all. No, no. And I put, yeah. And like, this was my very first audiobook, So I'm, I'm recording everything with my own mic. I'm, I'm doing everything for the first time, um, just yeah. as, as far as voice acting goes, it's all for the first time. And it's just like, I probably sunk 40 hours of, of uh, recording and another, <laughs> you know, 80 hours of editing <laughs> Jesus. into this. And I'm just like, I am not going back and changing this. I am not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. And so I just kind of, from that point on, I kind of started to add a little bit of a Southern drawl to her. You yeah. know, it would just kind of be like... Just like enough. To yeah, yeah. Like... Where it was no longer like, hun. It was like, hun. You know, <laughs> just like little things like that that she would say. And and yeah, that was that book was the most ridiculous thing I've had to do with accents. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's tremendous. Yeah. It... That just has to suck because like, you know, 
if thinking like accents in general, like you, you, I feel like, uh, you know, conversationally people can do accents like cartoonishly. Yeah. Like I could be like, <laughs> you know, I am from Russia, but that's like, if you're listening to like an actual audiobook or like something that you're like, is an art piece in yeah. any way, it's like, you can't just do that. So like you, I can see wanting to like, obviously wanting to like do it really good so yeah. you'd like if yeah if i were recording an audiobook where i had to do a russian accent and be like okay well i want to really make sure i can do sound like an actual russian person yeah and yeah, not exactly. just be like hello i'm from russia yeah <laughs> russia this is yeah because <laughs> yeah. like, that would take someone out of it yeah and so i just from that point i was just like whatever i'm going to go with what i've already recorded i'm not yeah. changing anything i'm not going to contact the author i'm just going to see what happens <laughs> yeah good call i remember i listened to uh daphne du uh jamaica inn on an audiobook once before uh-huh and it is like this you know very soft soft spoken sort of deep voiced british or irish guy doing it uh -huh. and it all takes place in ireland so all the characters were irish anyway okay but it was kind of funny like initially that he did it, that the main character's voice main character was a girl uh -huh. like a 15 year old girl or something and mm -hmm. you know, so every time he would be like uh and so and so walked across the fields into the grass and she looked to her auntie and she said oh mom oh auntie linda <laughs> <laughs> so, like, all of a sudden he'd just be i mean he was good at it and yeah. i mean that's the thing is like after the first few times that happened i was just like accepted it and didn't think it was weird anymore because he yeah. was really good at it yeah but like <laughs> just for like the first few minutes it was like oh what <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's just so yeah it can be off-putting for sure um, one of the very first audiobooks I ever listened to was um, The Hobbit. And I, oh man, I cannot think of the, the actor's name that read it, but he is one of the top British voice actors out there. And yeah. I was so impressed with him because he, you know, there's, there's this huge swarm of dwarves and they all had their own specific voice. Damn. And you know, and it's like, yeah. he had a very RP British accent as a narrator but uh you know like the dwarves all had like this kind of kind of a scottish you know sound to it and you know yeah and, you know almost similar to jean Reese davies you know <laughs> like kind of thing and davies callback yeah <laughs> and yeah callbacks already in the second episode <laughs> yeah one of these episodes is gonna have to be called jonathan rice davies <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and and uh and so I was super, I was like, man, like, how is he going to have all these voices? Like, there's no way he's even going to be able to do that. And then it's like, he started doing women's voices and everything too. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and then shortly thereafter, I started my own audiobooks. Nice. But I've definitely never had something as big a challenge as that. <laughs> well, you've never been Jonathan Reese davies Yeah, I've also, yeah, never had to be John Reese davies One day, one day you'll wake up and you'll be... You'll be Jonathan Reese davies and you'll look at yourself, and you'll go, oh, well, I guess I'm Jonathan Reese davies well, <laughs> Then your life will continue. I guess I'll have to go with this. <laughs> I'll just walk around being like, Indy, Indy, don't eat that. Bad dates. <laughs> now, this, this J. Jonah Jameson... Spot on. Yeah, he's a little... <laughs> <laughs> spot on he doesn't look anything like alfred yeah. molina yeah he definitely does <laughs> i mean though he's not Alfred. Mo and the What's funny thing name? is that um oh man. i never remember his name but he's in everything and he's awesome jk yeah. simmons yeah that's right good job thank you but yeah he uh and he is like actually a very spot on john john jameson yeah that's true i mean just one of those things where you know like robert downey jr is to me at least like the perfect pick for iron man ever uh-huh not nicholas cage who was almost iron man oh my god are you serious i'm serious <laughs> oh nicholas no. cage was almost a lot of things yeah i know he was almost superman yeah that would have made me cry mm -hmm. because <laughs> it would have been just oh, the man. worst oh man <laughs> and it's like he's he's fine for for some of the things he's in i mean like yeah you know like raising arizona is a really good movie he does a good job in that and right and and Vampire's Kiss is one of the greatest films ever made. Oh, I've never seen it. <laughs> it's really, really great. It's really weird and 
um, his performance just feels so intentionally bad. Oh, yeah. It's just bizarre. Yeah. And, like, he's so over the top and, like, <laughs> there's probably, like, a term paper you could write on um, his performance in Vampire's Kiss because it's, <laughs> like, it almost feels like, um, it almost feels like a commentary on acting itself, bro. Wow. Because, like, <laughs> it, um, it just the whole performance feels like you're aware that you're watching an actor know that he's just playing pretend and just like yeah. having fun with it. <laughs> That's awesome. There's literally a scene where he runs down the screen. You've probably seen like a clip of it from before or something. There's literally a scene of it where he's running down the street going, I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's wow. like pertinent to the story, but like just the execution of it feels very like, well, this scene I have to run down the street yelling, I'm a vampire. So, fucking that's gonna be a good time yeah start rolling <laughs> yeah it's like well i haven't got my workout in so i mean this is kind of a win-win situation <laughs> that's a great way to get a workout in yeah i think i'm gonna do that <laughs> see that's the thing is that exercise is difficult sometimes when it's not fun oh yeah it's hard to get in the habit of it oh yeah so you just gotta run down the street yelling whenever you want to be yeah. yelling yeah that's you know like maybe we should make an app for that yeah you know because People make tons of money making weird apps. Like there's there's one that's like the zombie run or something. Have oh, you ever yeah. seen that? I have heard of that. Where you they'll randomly like take your music and cut it out and start playing scary music and be like, zombies are after you. <laughs> and so I feel like that also could be a thing where it'll just randomly be like, oh, why don't you try? Oh, whoa, oh, you've fallen for a second there. I thought you were a goner. <laughs> okay, that was a nice landing. Oh. If I do say so myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just kind of be like, now try running down the street screaming, I'm a vampire. <laughs> and then, whoa, that was intense. Thanks, bro. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's like, if you didn't like that, it's like, now try doing push-ups and screaming at yourself like a drill sergeant. And if you enjoyed that... <laughs> It's like you can, you know, get your exercise that way. You could, it could also be like slap the next person you see on the running trail, and then when you have to run, it's because you they, you don't want them to beat you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we would suggest finding more obese people at first, so that you know you'll get away from them. <laughs> but as you get better at this, work your way up to the those strong, long distance marathon runners. The strongest looking people you could find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, you will truly have the fear of God in you. <laughs> I saw a snake when I was walking on a greenway once, and I, like, just had to awkwardly walk around it. Because uh -huh. it was stretched straight out. Yeah. Like, across the walkway. Uh-huh. And um, I just had to, like, ascertain which side of it was the tail, and then go around it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, just, like, try and do it quickly, but not, like, so quickly it scares it. Yeah. <laughs> so and then as soon as I like passed it, I started running away from it. <laughs> but like, uh, maybe I should have just like whacked it with a stick <laughs> and then started running away. Yeah. I mean, I really think that generally in the animal world, I've always been taught, like, I mean, first of all, I've been, I've been taught like different species of snake and stuff like that. My, my best friend growing up was super into the outdoors. He wanted to be a park ranger when he grew up. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah and just things like that and my grandpa and stuff like that would would just kind of be like oh yeah like this is a garden snake this is a corn snake here's how to tell you know what a poisonous snake looks like and you know mm. like he'd grab the encyclopedia and be like look these are copperheads like these are the most common poisonous snake in tennessee don't you know like here's what you do if you ever see one of those mm -hmm. so first of all I, I kind of know enough about snakes so i don't feel so scared around them that's cool but I would like that also would be nice. <laughs> yeah, but also just generally, like, like I've always been taught to kind of have the perspective of, like, you are kind of the apex predator, and almost everyone you, or every mm. creature you come across is more afraid of you than you are of it. Yeah, I guess that is true. Usually. And so, you know, it's even like if a bee lands on you, like, I would just kind of have the attitude, even as a kid, of, like, I allow you to be on my shoulder, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't spaz out and start swatting at it or something, and... Yeah, I first got stung by anything. I got stung by some wasps because I accidentally opened a door and their nest was in there. Whoa. Okay. 
But yeah, and so that was the first time I ever got stung by something. Uh huh. And um, so yeah, I feel like Whoa. like it's having that attitude has served me pretty well. That's nice. That and obviously, be. it's like if a bobcat was in a tree right above me, I wouldn't be like, oh, I will allow you to be in this tree. Oh, dang, that rhino was wrecking this is me, man. Not fair. I'm trying to web him and nothing happens. Man, it just feels like it's funny that like just through through rhino and black cat like just. I, they're just like, oh hey, it's Black Hat. I'm like, oh hey, it's Rhino. For yeah. For some reason. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, the moves. All oh, the moves. So many moves. We're going to have so many moves in the next episode. And that's when this guy will die. He's going to stop being such a dick. <laughs> oh. The moves. 